The president is out of the hospital, but members of his inner circle are also infected with COVID-19. Chris has more in the lead report. And the Aztec football season is set to start. Kyle has more in sports. A fashion show is overshadowed by controversy. Find out who made a major faux pas with Sandy in entertainment. And we saw cooler weather temperatures this week, but can we expect a brisk fall season? Devin has more in weather. New scene starts now. Hi, I'm Christina Painton. Welcome to this edition of New Scene. And I'm Ben Wadaram. We continue to work remotely to bring you the latest news of the week. We start tonight with a look at COVID-19's continued effect on San Diego County. As of Thursday, 49,000 COVID cases have been reported, with seven of those cases being fatal. This brings San Diego's death toll to 813. 354 new cases were also reported, with around 2.9% of them coming back positive. While San Diego is still below the state's 8% positivity guidelines, caution is still well advised. The White House is under quarantine. Tell us about it, Chris. Well, Christina, President Trump is back in the Oval Office and has returned to work. But there is no denying the White House is a COVID-19 hotspot. By some reports, the virus has infected nearly 20 people in Trump's circle, many following a Rose Guard ceremony for Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett last weekend. I don't know what the process of the contact tracing is that's going on at the White House. In general, the CDC is very much involved with the local authorities. Among them are Senator Mike Lee of Utah and Tom Tillis of North Carolina. Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson also tested positive. Johnson wasn't at the Rose Garden event, but he does travel with Trump. Others infected were part of Trump's debate prep team. That includes top policy advisor Stephen Miller and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Trump tested positive over a week ago. He also stayed at Walter Reed Medical Center for three days, receiving experimental treatments while there. Reports from Trump's doctors have been misleading and at times vague, but that doesn't seem to concern the president, who insists he is cured. He gave me Regeneron, and it was like unbelievable. I felt good immediately. I felt as good three days ago as I do now. Some in Washington are speaking out about the president's negligence, like Senator Dick Durbin. This president is not in touch with the reality Congress should be. We need testing and every member should have regular testing as well. The president and other members of Congress continue to self-quarantine and will continue to follow this story. Back to you, Ben. Thank you, Chris. And closer to home, a member of Gav... A member of Governor Gavin Newsom's office staff has tested positive for COVID-19. Contact tracing has started in the office. It is believed that the staff member has not been in direct contact with the governor or his closest staff in recent days. Officials say safety protocols were implemented as soon as the positive test was reported. And Newsom is making history with his latest addition to the Supreme Court. He is nominating the first openly gay judge to serve on California's highest court. I want these young people to know that living a life of authenticity is the greatest gift you can give yourself. And if you do that, you too will find yourself in a position where people see you. Judge Martin Jenkins would also be the third black man to serve on the California Supreme Court, the first African-American man in 30 years. Jenkins is a former NFL player for the Seattle Seahawks. He will now wait for confirmation from the State Commission on Judicial Appointments. 
Voting season is here. Noelle has the details on exploring your voting options. And as if 2020 hasn't brought enough changes, our election will be unlike any in our country's past. Everyone registered to vote in the state of California has received a ballot in the mail already. If it seems different, it is. And what you do with that ballot is different too. There will be less polling places available on election day due to the pandemic. But you don't have to wait to election day for your voice to be heard. Make sure to complete your ballot carefully and put it in the envelope provided. After that, you have three options. You can mail it in. Just make sure it's postmarked on or before election day. You can also personally deliver it to your county election office, a ballot drop box, or voting center before November 3rd. You can find the nearest one to you by checking out the website voter.org. And of course, you can always drop it at your polling place on election day. Just make sure to check if your polling place has not changed this year. Even if all you do is stop in to drop your ballot, you still need to be safe. Remember to wear your mask, wash your hands, and stay safe during this election season. And if you still need to register, it's easy to do online. Just go to registertovote.ca.gov. But don't wait. The deadline to register is October 19th. For News Scene, I'm Noelle Mortensen. And the president's latest tweet has stimulus bill negotiations back on. Trump and Congress agreed to a $1,200 stimulus check to be sent out to individuals immediately. But House Dems are urging an expansion of unemployment benefits and support for airline jobs. Waiting to pass any bill until after November 3rd may secure those additional benefits. And the Chula Vista Elementary School District has pushed back its reopening to what looks like the end of the year. The announcement comes from the district superintendent in a recent meeting. He also announced that $3.5 million in safety equipment has been purchased for the schools. But delays in the delivery of that equipment contributed to the delay. Our home team Padres are in the NLDS. Kyle, how's that series looking? Yes, unfortunately, Christina, the San Diego Padres have been eliminated from the World Series chase. They just couldn't get past the high-scoring Los Angeles Dodgers. The Padres didn't look themselves during the NLDS series. Part of it was the pitching. The two of their aces out were not at 100%, but a lack of offense didn't help either, as their usually hot bats went cold. Until next year, San Diego fans. Or are you ready for some football? Aztec fans can finally look forward to watching their team take the field. SDSU's football season is set to begin Saturday, October 24th against UNLV. All home games for the Aztecs will be played at their temporary home in Carson, California, far away from ongoing construction at the SDSU West site. This comes after the Mountain West Conference announced its plans to return to football earlier this week. And you may think keeping your house clean during a pandemic is a chore. Atlanta's Mercedes-Benz Stadium has a high-flying answer. Drones. That's right, drones are doing the work to sanitize the stadium ahead of the Atlanta Falcons game against the Carolina Panthers this Sunday. And how effective are these drones? It will take 95% less time to clean the stadium after the game. I need to get one of those drones for my place. And bad news for Heat fans, Miami is facing elimination tonight in the NBA playoffs. The Lakers have taken a commanding 3-1 lead in the series played in the bubble. Only the LeBron James-led Cleveland Cavaliers have climbed out of a 3-1 deficit against the Golden State Warriors. That was back in 2016. The Los Angeles Lakers and Miami Heat will tip off tonight at 6 on ABC. And finally tonight, Seattle Storm Guard Sue Bird has added another trophy to her collection. The Olympian and former UConn sensation led the Storm to a WNBA championship. This is the fourth title for Sue and the Storm, tying them for most all time with Houston and Minnesota. Congrats to them. That's all I have for sports. Back to you, Ben. Thanks, Kyle. And community college students from here in San Diego now have the opportunity to intern with NASA. The NASA Community College Aerospace Scholars are now accepting applications 
for a five-week online course. Students in the field of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics interact with trained professional educators and fellow STEM students. To find out more, visit nasaostem.okstate.edu. The deadline for enrollment is November 18th. A legendary music icon passed away this week. Sandy, please tell us more. Yeah, Christina, it's a sad week for rock and roll. Legendary rock star Eddie Van Halen has lost his decade-long fight with cancer. His memory will live on through his acclaimed guitar work and generation-defining music. He was best known for songs like Jump, Panama, and Hot for Teacher. He was 65 years old. And in other music news, singer Rihanna's new lingerie show is stirring up controversy. Riri's new Amazon Prime series features models of all shapes, sizes, and genders. But one of the songs she used in the show samples verses from the Quran, angering Muslim groups. Rihanna has apologized, saying that she didn't realize that the lyrics were sacred. She is removing them from the show. And not everyone is getting hit in the wallet because of the pandemic. Actress Sofia Vergara has been named the highest paid actress in the world by Forbes. She surpassed both Angelina Jolie and Gal Gadot. According to Forbes, the actress made $43 million this year. Vergara followed her run on Modern Family with a seat at the America's Got Talent judges table. She also has endorsements and licensing deals to add to the mix. And speaking of diversified interests, Singer Gloria Estefan, along with her daughter and niece, is hosting the new Red Table talk show on Facebook. The format follows the original Red Table talk created by Jada Pinkett Smith. The Estefan family will talk candidly about relationships, mental health, and other topics. You can see it now on Facebook Watch. I was a huge fan of the original series, so I can't wait to see the new one. Well, Ben, that's all I have for you this week. Now back to you. Thank you, Sandy. Switching gears, wildfires have become so extreme, experts have a new term to describe them. A gigafire is one that burns more than one million acres. And the August Complex Fire is California's first in that category. But that's not the first gigafire in the U.S. Previous fires in Montana, Idaho, and Alaska have burned over a million acres. And while fires are still raging in California, we in San Diego are starting to feel a little chilly. Devin, is fall weather finally here? Thank you, Christina. And yes, Things have cooled down a bit. We are in for a chillier weekend than we have been having recently. You can look forward to some nice hoodie weather even. Air quality is also improving from last week. We're seeing ourselves move to fair conditions and with coastal winds set over the next few days, we can expect to see that air quality continue to improve. Don't stock up on hot cocoa just yet though, as we'll see a return to high temperatures about mid next week. Current temperatures today along the coast, we have mostly cloudy conditions and hovering around a nice 70 degrees. Inland, we have similar conditions, just below 70, and those same conditions stretch out to the mountains. Out in the desert, we see the things are warming up quite a bit compared to the rest of the county, with temperatures hitting almost 90 degrees. Still fair conditions for those residents who enjoy off-roading or other desert fun. In our national forecast, uh, we see various degrees of precipitation across the country. Starting just north of the Great Lakes area, we can see some rain. And moving down to the south, we see a very heavy storm conditions. And this is a result, of course, from Hurricane Delta, which is slamming into the Gulf Coast as we speak, making potentially the nation's 17th record-breaking weather disaster this year. We see Washington and Oregon experiencing rainfall as well, coming from a storm system in the Pacific. Don't expect those rains to make it down to us, though. Uh, we can only expect a slight drizzle tomorrow morning, but not much more after that. And tonight's temperatures all across the county are going to be chilly. Like I said earlier, this weekend is going to feel like fall for a few days. So bundle up tonight and enjoy a cozy evening. 
And rounding things out with our five-day forecast, let's take a look at the next few days ahead. As we mentioned earlier, those daytime temperatures tomorrow and Sunday are going to be relatively tame compared to what we've seen these past few weeks. 76 tomorrow, 78 on Sunday. But then we see that huge spike starting Tuesday all the way up to 88 and even 90 on Wednesday. Luckily, the evenings are going to offer you some nice reprieve as we stay well in the 60s throughout the next few days. Well, that's been the weather for today and this week. Thank you, Christina, and have a wonderful day. Thanks, Devin. That's all we have for now. You can find all of our stories on sdcitytimes.com backslash newscene. And remember to follow SD City News Scene on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Good night.